All right, plan is white. Let's push through. Let's hit the center here. Capture. Let's capture again. Hmm. <laughs> Let's bring the night out supporting. Tuck the queen. They're moving very unusually, actually. Um, I don't think I've seen this sort of continuation type stuff. If we just hit the queen, though, smaller piece attacking a higher piece, don't look like it can be wrong, does it? So we should at least get the bishop off the board. I'm thinking. Yeah, we should at least get the bishop off the board. What's our purpose? Pressure on the king area. We don't have the white square bishop supporting. If we did bring the bishop, he's just going to bring his bishop here. So I think we're just going to take, just going to keep it simple. We'll, we'll lose the momentum of whatever it is, what, whatever position we've got, trying to be too fancy. We do have time to actually go and castle on the queen side. Do we want to lose that? I mean, we could bring the bishop here. It's a bit defensive. I think I'm going to castle on the queen side. Don't want to lose the momentum, as we mentioned before, about bringing the bishop here, losing the momentum of taking the dark square bishop. So it's key once you feel like you've got maybe a, a win in time, in tempo, to try and keep that up. Can't push here because the queen will take. But can we put pressure on their higher piece? The knight can put pressure onto their higher piece. Obviously, he's going to come here and then put a two on one on the pawn. We do have the bishop that can come and protect. Don't really want to get into a protect and serve situation, but we may have to live with that. Rook's chomping here, but can't do anything there at the moment. So I think I am going to swing the knight across. Could attack their queen, but the bishop would just take. Could attack the queen here, doubling the pawns. Don't mind doubling the pawns. Um, yeah, bring it across. He comes and attacks. I better move quick, Anta, because they may just jump off because I'm taking too long. Attack, bishop comes. I think we'll go with that. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. It can't be wrong. I think he's definitely coming here with the two on one. Could always bring the knight back though. I don't need to leave the knight on the rim, do I? I can bring the knight back, supporting the pawn. Then they go and castle. We need to get the bishop out. Looking a bit more proactive. Targeting the square if he does move the knight, but then the rook's there anyway, so no big bis. Oh, okay. He's actually attacking the knight. All right. Fair enough then, so we can bring the knight across and uh, defend the pawn. His queen's, well, okay, yeah, let's just bring this across. His queen is targeting towards the king area type thing. 
and that was always going to happen x-ray through to the rook but is it a greedy munching bishop does it improve their position on the board that's the key question i'm going to ask myself anyway is there anything else that we can do can we hit him no we can't rook can't get here so it's a piece for a piece because the bishop is going to be taken anyway and this knight's guarding this square so i was thinking of coming here getting a touch on here but that's not going to happen because the rook's going to be disappearing hmm so we could attack their pawn but their queen is defending that pawn so what other position am i looking for maybe if i come here and then when they take maybe the knight takes we've got a bit of an attack on the pawn i don't think we'll get it though because they'll castle let's go here and take here so queen comes down for the pawn we go for their pawn he's got a check on our king rook comes across puts a check on our king oh they're about to be castled well that's what we said they'd do but i think i was thinking maybe they're going to be a bit more proactive maybe he's looking at defending their pawn so is there anything that we can do could hit his knight give him something to think about whilst he's coming down putting checks on and my king is running for dear life <laughs> let's hit the knight smaller piece attack and a higher piece he may just ignore it and come down or he might just attack our queen So he's attacking the queen, he's also attacking the pawn here. The knight's defending this pawn at the minute, but he's made his way towards our king area. Lovely spot here for a lovely checkmate. Well, not a checkmate, but a check on the king. Yeah, so that's quite nice. So I don't have anything here anyway. So I'm always, always going to be making my way across here at some point. So I may as well just bring it here, but then his rook's going to face us off. But if his rook faces us off, we can take the knight. So I'm going to go here. If he forgets himself, our knight is protecting this pawn if his knight takes. So trying to cover off the blind spots as best possible. Well, he's defending the knight. Okay, that's an interesting one. He's also got space to put checks on our king. So do we want to get our, maybe push this pawn to block that? Although he could have gone there with a check, couldn't he? So if we push here and if he does decide to go there, we can push here. Okay, let's go with that in terms of blocking off this type of situation fly then. so I like these sort of games win lose or draw whichever it's good practice because they open a little bit odd which you know it was the responses were not what I was used to so it does make you think and it worked out for them because they're plus three now. Uh, so they're now attacking our higher piece. So we could attack theirs, rook takes, but I don't think... One of the key statements in our mantra is you don't go and attack another piece if you've got a piece under attack, unless, of course, it's to your benefit. And it's not really to my benefit that at this moment in time. So there must be something better for us. I think they must have given us something. Although, yeah, could attack a pawn, but again, it just opens up that area. Can we attack their queen? Not really, because we'll get taken. Can't go here, because his knight will take. Could come here, x-ray and through to the queen. Let's do that. X-ray and through to their queen. It's got no protection on it. So if we get this type of situation going, it's small potatoes, but 
is try to use the principles, the basic principles of X-ray pinning, whichever way you want to call it. So he's taking himself off of the X-ray, looking for a checkmate position here. So we can bring the poor bishop here to defend and also have a two on one on the knight. Also brings in the rook defending. If the knight does move, because the thing is, if we don't move this bishop anyway, the knight's going to move, then the queen is going to have a check on the king uh, rook here. So I'm going to bring the bishop in, into the fold. I think he's still going to move the knight so that his queen's got this. So if his knight's got something on my king, no, no checks on my king. Does he have anything on my queen? No. So I think they will move. Our rook is now, it's not dead in the water because it can move freely. Maybe go to here to stop the queen from coming in here. So we are totally in on the defensive. The opponent is using the answer process that we've been talking about. And they're using it okay because they're maintaining pressure all the time. You know, each of the moves is like building on the next move to pressure the king area. That's okay, isn't it? We could take. We could still take. Rook takes. It's on our queen. Maybe we just bring our rook into the game as well. And then each doubles up on this file as well. Get the rook away because of the queen having that diagonal anyway. I think that's probably better, isn't it? Let's do that. It's probably going to swing down, but I don't know. Or oh, maybe that and then that. But we're trying our best to try and circumvent. Next move I'm thinking of is this, obviously. The knight is there at the minute, but, you know. wouldn't do that straight away because if it does take then his rook is on our but we'd get a back we'd get a back ranker if that happens wouldn't we and they probably realize this because his king would have been stuck there we would have just been able to take the rook and then rook and it would have been a back ranker but we can't take it now because his knight's gone undefended and our rook doesn't have any defense at the back so I ha kind of forced to actually come here with my queen so I'm going to bring it back just to defend and then he's going to take then this other rook's going to attack us so it's kind of squishing us really with the power of the rooks oh greedy munching oh we've got a greedy munch situation going on has he got a checkmate type thing Does he have a checkmate per se? Just take anyway with the check. I'm just thinking, does he? I don't think he has, does he? Bring the knight up. Attacking. No, that don't work. We're gonna have to give space, aren't we, with the pawn? So we're gonna have to move the pawn. Yeah, let's just move the pawn. Then this knight's gonna get all activated. Maybe here to here. Got a bit of a defense, maybe. Hit and run, hit and run. I've not even got past the halfway mark, have I, with any of my pieces? I've just been totally jammed in, they just swarmed me. <laughs> if you ever get games like these you know play a longer game obviously this is like a rapid game but it's still longer than those five minute three minute two minute games even then one minute games and um, you don't have time to think and then you're just throwing pieces around whereas longer play games a lot more time to think a lot more time to practice your answer process win lose or draw if you can explain it to yourself as you're working through the game this doesn't have any protection on but I need all the protection I can have. So if I go and harass it, it's 
Rock's coming down here, isn't it? And then his queen can go here. I suppose the bishop can defend. It looks like a little fortress. I don't know how strong it is, but it looks like it's circumventing some manoeuvres. But the only manoeuvre it's not. Ah, yeah. So if we did go for the rook, then if he's, sorry, the knight, and his rook came down here, and he comes and puts the check on, the king is here, the bishop can no longer come here, then he's going to have a two-on-one, -on and then basically he's going to get a checkmate because my king doesn't have anywhere to go. So that's the position that they'll be looking for. So it's not that big a fortress. If we moved up first, then if he's going backwards and forwards, then we can go backwards and forwards and get a draw. Hmm, move the king first then. We've worked that backwards. It's always a good idea to work things backwards as well, especially if you're in like a sticky situation. Uh, look at what the opponent can potentially do to you. Um, this player has got more pieces on the board, more high value pieces than us on the board. Um, so we're not pre basically advantageous in this game. But the idea and the concept that we're talking about is like, read it backwards. Look at what potentially the opponent is trying to do to you and what is their best position. I might not have circumvented it. I might be too late to the party. But looking backwards helps you then choose which move you want to make and that's understanding the answer process it's understanding what is it the opponent wants to do to me they want to squish my king they want to put pressure on my area around the king or key pieces around my king so if i can defend those potential threats then i can work it backwards and then hopefully try and find a better yeah the knight was always coming down wanted coming for some freebies um how do we get to the, his king? I don't think we can harass it with anything, really. Only thing I can think is some <laughs> major sacrifices of some sort. I can't get an angle in. He's on a white square. Could bring the queen up here, attacking the knight, letting it have free reign to just take the pawn or something. But then after that, I don't really have any checks in. I can't get in anywhere. It's a white square bishop. Only thing I can think is if we went here, if we went there, does the rook still continue coming down? Do we push onto the bishop, well, onto the queen with a two on one on this pawn here? Queen comes down, not got a check on the king. That might work. <laughs> You wish, you wish your calculations to work. Um, I always do, and the opponent never does it, anything that I say. But for me, attacking the king area, this is my only hope, in essence. And I don't think, oh, do you know what? I've just seen it. Rook can come here. But if he does go there, the bishop can take it. Interesting. So let's move the queen, and we're going to go with this attempt at attacking this pawn area around the king. That's our answer, because we are getting totally squished. Let's see how it pans out. Could just go up and down, like we said, with the checks. So the knight has moved, so it's scared of the knight. So if we attack the queen, like we said, but realistically, we're attacking this pawn. Is that working for us? Do we get a draw? Just hit it and go backwards and forwards like that. Oh, spoiling the show. Now he's got my queen. Oh, if I go there, it's definitely... Oh, he's squishing me. Bring the knight up here, blocking. You can see I'm still just focused on this. Queen comes down, block. Or does he? No, he's not going to do that. The pawn's on. Block. 
Rook comes down for getting at the bishops there. Take. Oh, it's building up quite nicely because we found an, found an in. Or does he just defend? Oh, look at that. Spoils everything, eh? So we could push this pawn. I'm going to push this pawn because of the bishop attacking the queen. They might just see a forward pushing pawn and forget the queen is there under threat from the bishop. Fingers crossed. Oh, come on. So what else do we have now then? Oh, that's just totally spoiled everything now. Do we come across here, attacking the knight? I don't want to waste time doing that, really. Oh, now he's got an, he's got his own in, hasn't he? I really don't want to spend any time chasing around pawns or knights. I want to get to the king, but now I can't. So they've circumvented it. Oh. Is there anything else? I can't. And the thing is, he's got a rook and a knight. There's no point in really trying to exchange off the queen either. Ooh, I think we might have to give this one to them. Having spotted that. Oh, that would have been it. Is there anything else, people? Come on, squish. I've got nothing backing that up. See, I've got a free pawn here, but I'm, that don't mean anything. I'm going away from my king. He's going to be coming here, then taking this pawn. He's got this knight. What's the knight doing? Oh, the knight. Well, bishop can take the knight. I'm not really interested in trading pieces. There must be something better. Focus. When that one plan goes out the window, it's all, it's done, isn't it? Okay, attacking the knight. Bishop. Okay, so what, um, what happens if we take, then the rook takes? There's no spaces anywhere. No, no. If we take this mamby pamby pawn, it's... That doesn't feel right. Grabbing a pawn. We're not anywhere. We're still on this pawn. But the queen is coming across here. And it's getting back into the game, isn't it? I'm going to have to make a move. going to have to make a move. Or else they're just going to leave the game. Oh, that might be a strategy, yeah? Just keep thinking. Keep thinking and then they leave, they leave the game. No point moving the knight. It's just, oh, man, you I could, could move the knight, couldn't I? Move the knight. Get the knight here, attacking the pawn. All the while, he's just going to put a check on me, is he? Yeah, he can't go here because the bishop will take. I'm going to give that a try. It's the only bit of hope. Trying to put pressure on this pawn. Probably going to shoot back up again. With a check. Yeah, these, like I was mentioned earlier, these types of games push your brain to look and find what is what is your purpose in the game. Purpose, purpose is to put pressure on the king or the king area. So the selection of my moves that I've made recently have been focused on, well, how can I put pressure on the king and the king area? Yes, I'm losing materially and even positionally, really. My king is airy, you know. But how can I still think about putting pressure on the king or the king area? And these are the moments that have happened to me and I've seen many play happen to many other players as well, where you feel you're in an advantageous position in the game. And suddenly the opponent comes out with an attack from out of the blue, it looks like, and your king is getting squished and you can't do anything about it. So that's the answer process. It does help. Uh, oh, what's this now? How is attacking me, stopping me from getting here? Oh, it's just 
bring it back. Do we have time? I don't think we're going to have time. Are we? We're still chomping at the bit to get this in. It's our only hope. Getting a three in there. They're wanting to get their queen into the game somehow, so maybe they're going to come across here to get it in the game somehow. It's at the moment. Oh, no. They could go here as well to get it back into the game. Come round the back. So I think that's their key focal point. Unless, of course, they're doing something fancy with the knight. This square somehow. No, 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 no. Is it? Oh, one of them. Has it landed on anything? It gives us that moment to come here, doesn't it? But the problem with going there is that I don't have the bishop here anymore protecting this square. So he's just going to come and put a check on us. So the three is going to go out the window. The only piece that can do that protection is this queen. So it's taking out, it's taking out that process. So if we go up, look into attack, he comes here with a check on the king. Yeah, but then I'm kind of almost forced to do this because he's because he can go. Bam. I have to go down, he goes down again, blah, 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 up and down, I can't get any further. Ah, oh, damn, gutted, gutted. So the knight's not defending this area anyway, so he could still continue doing that. Then he comes with the check on the king, and I have the option of bringing the queen here. I don't really want to exchange the queen. Can the knight come back? No, it can't come back and block. It could defend the area, but it's going backwards. That is not good. Right, what's the pain? Here, queen comes here with the check on the king. Could exchange, don't want to do that. So I am going to push back. And what does he have after that? Like we said, it can go down. And then we can go up. And if it goes up again, then the bishop can go in front. Continue as is. Okay, so the queen's come in, just come down, go up, looking to get the bishop in front. That's the only thing I can see happening. I want to continue this only bit of hope yes there's a pawn here yes there was a pawn there i'm not grabbing them i want to squish the king <laughs> ah dear yep so he's gone so i'll bring the queen back i don't like i said i've not looked at any other moves that the potential can do well, for them to be squishing our king it's probably just going back down again up and then we can go here But then that's taking my bishop away from the three. So the knight's going to probably have to trouble the rook. Don't know about greedy munching for a pawn. I'm trying to improve position. You never know. I'm on five minutes. What is it? A five second increment, isn't it? So is he doing something magical with the knight now? So if he's bringing the knight down here looking to do some sort of manoeuvres like this, that's probably what they're going to be doing. So if the knight does come down, does it give us a bit of chance to actually go a kablam? King can just simply move though. Then we can go kablam, and then that might be it. See, I'm trying. Oh, oh, I was just going to say I'm trying to dust off the the, the trophy <laughs> in readiness to receive it, but now they're um, yeah, they're blocking everything. Now that's not good, is it? 
We could still do the free though. But it's not the same because we don't get a check on the king. So if we took Yeah, something's telling me it's, it's not working, it's not working. But we've put an, enough pressure on from a very bad position to highlight the answer process in its application. And the opponents played well with their early um, answer process as well. But now they're looking at their blind spots and rectifying the position, which is really good. This is the types of games that you need. So do we swing now? I don't think you change track once just because he's moved there. I think we take. He doesn't have to take, though. That's the thing now. So if he if he doesn't take, our queen can come here with a check on the king. Just to just to have a check on the king. If he does take. A queen can take with a check on the king. I'm going to take, but like I said, there's no check, so he can still do whatever he's doing now with his checks. And that might mess up our bishop, bishop alignment because we said we we're going to bring the bishop here. So that might be their little trick, might it? We bring that down, king goes up, comes back up again, putting a check on. I'm just going to have to move the king up and down because I don't want to be the rook up just to take the, the knight off the board. And any checks that I put on his rook's just going to go in, in front. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. Brings this down to disconnect, hoping that we disconnect with the bishop here. Oh, that's a sad state of affairs. Damn. Oh, I was just polished. Oh, come on. It's so annoying. Oh, I thought the game was over anyway. I thought I'd actually lost earlier on um, with the build-up of the opponent's attack. But I'm feeling quite good that we got out. Oh, I didn't realise the Queen was coming back. I thought they were going to continue their attack on our... Um, that's a horse of a different colour, isn't it? So he's got two on there, so we can go for the attack on the king. And it could, well, he can't go there because of the knight. So he has to go back here. And then the knight can go anywhere. Oh, I wish the knight had a check on the queen. I'm going to put the check on. Oh, I wish the knight had a check on the... I suppose it can go here. That's, is that not checkmate? Is that checkmate? No, it isn't it. No, it's not because it can. It's got pieces that can go in front. Oh, people. Well, I think the queen going back here. Um, I, he could have got a draw. I think he would have got a draw if he'd have just dropped his king back. You know. Oh no, what's happening? Something new is happening. Oh, come on. What is with the exchange? Oh, I don't, I can't do the exchange, can I? I thought I'd won it. Oh, I'm going to have to bring the queen here to attack on this side. But that's too late, isn't it? Because his rook's just going to take the knight. Oh, shabby. Oh man, I thought I just had it. Oh, unbelievable. So we'd get his knight off the board. If we went here and then his rook or queen takes the knight, we take his knight. So then he's got a rook in the, uh, and then he's going to take this, mind you. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, and he's actually got my pawn as well with his queen and he's going to be on our bishop. Oh, that's even worse, isn't it? We go and attack the knight. Queen comes, takes the pawn. And they don't go for the knight. They just go for the pawn. And it's on our bishop. Oh, there must be something I can do here. 
Oh, this is bad now. Where did they get that from? Oh, the pawn's gone. It's all falling apart. The queen comes across, attacking the knight. Well, it's attacking the queen. The queen's just going to take it, isn't it? Oh. So, ah, oh, that's not good. That's not good. Could block. Could block. But then his rook's just going to come across, isn't it? Rook's just going to come there. Where can the knight go? Does it, does it have a check? Attacking the rook, queen takes, but it's still the same thing. Oh, sad times. There's nothing on anything. No white squares. Bishop can't do anything. No. Attack the rook. Nothing. Take the pawn. But then he takes our pawn. Oh, sad times, sad times. Block. Rook comes across. Oh, man. I'm trying to look for something. I can't see a damn thing anymore. I've used the pawn. My energy's on this square. Oh, and he miraculously got out of it. Oh, oh man. Gutted. Absolutely gutted. He's got loads of time as well. Damn it. Ah, mate. Right, don't rush anything, even though it's a shocking move that they're going to come in. Just still take some time. So it would be lovely to do that, but he's just going to take our queen off the board. I don't have any hits on his king at all with the knight oh he's gone one further he's gone one further I thought that would have been better but maybe this one's better he's just made sure that he's gone on a white square, dark square oh, maybe he forgets himself Oh, shabby times. He's got no protection there. Now he probably comes back. Yeah, done that wrong. Done that wrong. I did it wrong. I should have. No, I don't want to exchange. Should have put some support on me at least. Eh? It's gone pawn grabbing. Is this the moment? No, there isn't the moment. There isn't the moment, dude. Is this rook's coming down or... Check on his king? No, no. Take the pawn and have a check on his king. At some point. <laughs> Come on, can we just squeeze up and get a check on? Get some momentum going. Come on, get your rook down. Let's take. Oh, he's going for the thing. His rook's coming here. Uh, and this queen is coming. No, no, it's not. Yeah, it's coming there, isn't it? Oh my gosh. I've only got 23 seconds. Five second increment. This queen's coming here because the bishop got. Okay, he's not doing that. Dark square. Check. Dark square. Knight rook check. Does he have a fork on his queen? No. Can't do that. Oh, Shaba. Could go for a check, but then it takes. Not that way. Check. And, ooh, five seconds. Check. 
Rook takes. Oh my, come on. Are we going to do this? Is bullet going to help us? Check. Is the bullet trading helping us? Come on. Some sort of check. No, that's not a check. Check me. Oh my God, you have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that is absolutely brilliant. That has got to be the best answer process game I've played against a very formidable opponent as well who was using the answer process as well. Absolutely brilliant. I'm so proud of that. Really proud of that. Well, we, we didn't stand a chance. Let's go and have a look let's fire through and i'm wanting people to play different types of openings against me because as you've noticed we've had quite a lot of the games it's more or less the same types of responses that we're getting and we're fairly comfortable with those positions so i did say in this game that this person was playing a little bit different let's show him plus two all right so there must be a massive dip at some point because um, I felt we were getting squished. We gave explanations for all of the moves, so I don't really want to break down that. I'm just looking now at the computer evaluation, looking to see whether or not it dips like, you know, below the two level. And then we maybe consider how we develop from there. This type of training is what we do um, through these games that we're interested in playing. Not so much when we're doing the blitzy and bullety type stuff. But for the longer play games, it's more interesting to look and see what the computer is saying. Sometimes I'll go, yes, I agree with you. And other times I'll challenge it and go, well, yeah, that's a good computer move, but it's not a very good human move. I would never get in that position. So I'm challenging all the time so to help it get into my own personal Rolodex. So we're just flicking through, give it time to think of the position. Okay, let's go. Yeah, so it doesn't like the knight going on the rim, attacking the queen. Yeah, so it did drop. We were two, plus two, so it did drop. So that's something to consider. Queen g3. So it's basically saying attacking the pawn. Yeah, coming here because it's got no protection on it, rather than overextending on the knight. But I did have an explanation for it. I know it's a big drop though, so really maybe pay a bit of attention to it. Just hang fire a little bit on that knight move. Yep, fair dues. I just don't really like attacking these pawns. You know, when it says attack these pawns, I'm like thinking. But the benefit, I suppose, is it's attacking this pawn as well. Yeah, so... I'm just, I was just focused on that one because when they go on castle, then obviously it's defended. I think I mentioned that in the actual game. Um, I didn't mention about this pawn, I don't think. So that's a different think thought process on there, not just tunnel visioning on this particular pawn. I think if I'd have fought a little bit longer, took a bit more time, and if I had seen this one, then I probably would have gone that way rather than smaller piece attacking the higher piece. But I don't have a problem with the smaller piece attacking the higher piece. Even though it dropped big, um, it didn't feel like it did anything bad to me. The computer's saying it is, but it's it's still only minus one. So it's neither here nor there, but it's actually dropped about three points because we were plus two. So that's the sort of gravity of the situation. So we bring the knight back. So at this point here now, it's um, definitely looking like we're not in good shape. Um, so we're moving the queen now, looking to see whether or not we're x-raying through to that pawn on the back. And, oh, look at that, minus seven. Yeah, it's minus seven because we've lost the rook. And as we said, you know, if you, get a, if you can get a piece for a piece, then it's a matter of like jostling for position and uh, doesn't matter how many pieces you've got on the board or the weight of the pieces that you've got. You have to be able to work with the pieces that you've got. 
and if you're not working with them well, then they're tantamount to being useless. This player didn't play like that. I thought they played really well, really focused, and how we got out of that, we do know. <laughs> I won't say I don't know. We do know because we explained every movement that we were making, every thought that we were thinking. If the opponent didn't play it correctly, that isn't our fault. The opponent to us played it well. And we found what we thought were little loopholes in their position. And if they didn't build on the position that whatever they had, then that's not our fault. Do you know what I mean? So I can't dumb down the skills that we showed in the game. And I can't dumb down the opponent's skills either. I thought they played really well. So it's minus five. Now it's coming down, attacking. Look at that, minus eight. We do not stand a chance. The computer's going, you, you just resign. Minus eight and stuff, that's resignable. So they're grabbing. We're just moving. We explained all of this and just seeing if it shifts anywhere. No, it's constantly on their side. Yes, all the way through. Look at that. Minus eight. Minus eight. It's most definitely a never give up situation. I like these games. I genuinely do like these games. They do help improve your game. I wouldn't be able to play a game like this, how we played it, back years ago, because I would have just folded. I would have either resigned or I would have made duffer moves which the opponent would have taken advantage of whereas obviously the movements that we made made the opponent think something you know to make them make a move that maybe wasn't the right move or we made them think well how are we getting in here is king is all protected you know so being able to do certain moves and try and find positions as best possible the key thing though is under pressure like this, trying to find the weak areas around the king, the opponent's king, that is like gold dust. That's like the proper silver lining to it all. If in these sort of situations, you can find pressure on the king or the king area. Still minus here. Look at that. We do not stand a chance. What's happened there? Just, just drop that. Oh, the night move. The night greedy munching. Yeah, usually greedy munching things don't bode well, do they? So greedy munching night is uh, giving us four points back. And uh, we did like this bishop move here. I don't care what the computer says. I did, I did like that. Uh, but then I didn't like that. <laughs> okay. And then we talked it all through, so that's fairly comfortable. It's still showing minus four, but it's better than minus eight. Rook goes back. Damn, how can they see these things? You know, but this is where the opponent, I said, you know, said the opponent's playing it well because they're now covering their blind spots. You know, they're realizing that oh, there's potential attack on my king here. I need to sort this out. Whereas I was hoping they'd go and over egg or something with the queen and the knight, and then we could have taken advantage. So we had to work harder yet again. And I'm going for a little sneaky one here. You know, the bishop. Putting an extra through to the queen. And then we decided, well, we need to get this knight up and put some pressure on that damn F pawn and see what we can get from it. Still showing minus four. And it's still showing minus four. And it's still showing minus four. We didn't get a look in, did we? Probably in the very start of the game we did, but look at this minus fours all the way through. Queen, yeah, this was where I thought, well, if they just keep their queen going up and down, they potentially could have got a draw. Obviously, the computer's showing it's kicking our butt, but hey, it's a human. So we take, and it's minus six, minus seven. <laughs> it, it didn't feel like a minus seven. It, it felt like, whoa, you know, we've got a chance, but now we don't have a chance. Oh. Oh, plus 60, plus 62. Oh, do you know what? I missed it. I missed it. 
I, I think I missed it. I missed this next move. I went the wrong way. Oh my gosh, as I'm looking at it now, that's all we had to do. And then we would have had that fancy position of the knight being able to go anywhere. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I'm kicking myself now. I'm kicking myself now. That's all we had to do. I knew there was something. I knew there was something. Oh, damn. So we went back down into the minus sevens from this maneuver. Oh, shabby times. Oh, kicking myself. That's all we had to do. My God, where's it? He's it's got two places and he's not going to go there. He's going to go back. And then we would, in the eyes of the position that I was looking at, we were looking at, well, wish the knight had some check on the queen or something because the bishop's going to have this x-ray through. So I'd seen this position, but not with the queen being there. You know, it was like, oh, well. Oh. Oh, that would have been beautiful. I'm still looking at that now. Oh, that's disgusting, man. So we came across here with the queen. And then we blocked with the knight. Oh, it's still minus seven. It's, it's sickening seeing this now. Oh, dear. All right, so we brought the queen across, but we still we this is the game we played, and these were the cards that were dealt. So we shuffled our deck a little bit, and we realised that we had a bad hand, but we felt like we were kind of trying to improve our position on the board. And then the queen's coming down. We're looking at well, how can they squish us? So we're thinking if we can get our queen. In some way, shape, somewhere, putting checks on the king, we might get some momentum in to in order to squish him a little bit. So the queen comes down, so we're up, and because we'd already covered off this bishop type defense, um, that was always going to be on the cards anyway. So they brought that down. So that bishop move was done early doors, you know, in our heads, because we thought the queen was going to be going up and down, but they didn't. So that's why that was easier to make. And then I was looking at this and thinking, well, he's going to have to come here or wherever, you know, to actually start putting pressure on the king. Our king can go here, but it doesn't have any squares. But we have time to put checks on the king. But I didn't know where they were going to be putting the king. So they could have probably got away. So the queen comes up. So all I know is we have to just keep putting checks on the king now. And it's, oh, it's a draw. Fantastic. Fantastic. I don't think we played a draw move, but hey, what can we do? Oh, nice one. Still a draw. Oh, and we've got a win in two. Did we do it in two? Queen comes down with a check. Oh, mate in one. And it's done. Yes. Still looking at that, it's magical. Absolutely magical. That was something from nothing. And that is a key thing that as chess players, when we're playing um, players and suddenly they come out with some magical stuff somewhere, you have to look at your game, evaluate it, assess it. Where did you go wrong? Did you really cover the blind spots? Did you actually cover off the attacks that the opponent was potentially going to do to you or were you really just so overconfident with your own attack that you were too blindsided to what was actually happening on the board so i won't say we got lucky i think we played this very skillfully and we played it from the back almost all the way through the game and then eventually found um nicer position with less material power on the board Good game.